Hey, good evening everybody. Uh, Dan here, Ultimate Boston Red Sox Collector page on Facebook. Uh, posting this video to YouTube and then also to my channel on Facebook also. Or to my website on Facebook. Um, no mail in the, nothing in the mail today. Quiet day. Um, I do still have quite a few things coming from eBay. Um, I actually, on my last video yesterday, talked about how I might uh, talk about and show some of my autographed 3x5 index cards that I just started collecting last year. Uh, it was something that never uh, caught my eye, had any interest in, until one day I just realized that I want to try to obtain as many different autographs of Red Sox players as I can, and that getting on, on index cards might be one of the most affordable way to do it, um, whereas I may not be able to find a baseball or a photo. So I ended up buying a couple of small lots and then uh, purchased a few individual ones here and there from sellers that have multiples. Um, and I've got about 75 index cards now. Uh, they range in players that played back from the 1940s uh, up until probably the 1990s. I don't have a lot of newer players because simply that's not a uh, it's not a collectible item for people anymore. People don't send out index cards in the mail like they used to. Uh, that used to be a very popular way of obtaining player autographs. And now, of course, people want it on a card or a photo or a bat or a ball or whatever. So it's kind of a, a dead a dead item now, but um, it is one way to possibly add to my autograph collection. Um, I'm not gonna show them because honestly, they're in four pocket pages in a binder and the lighting in this room is terrible as it is. And uh, it's a little grainy and I actually tried putting up a few against the screen earlier and you can't even see them. There's too much of a glare. So um, just wanted to talk about that small, very small aspect of my collection. Um, I'm in the process of cataloging everything in my collection. So eventually I'll, I'll have a list of all the different players that I have an autograph of. Um, I actually printed a list uh, online somewhere. I want, maybe it was on Wikipedia of all the players who have played for the Red Sox. And um, it actually was a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. So i uh, be curious once I get a master list of all the autographs that I have, uh, what percentage of players that I have. I'm guessing it's probably only in about the three to 5% range if I'm, if I'm lucky. Um, it may, maybe it's more than that. I really don't know off the top of my head, but um, that's a discussion for another day, I guess. Um, so tonight I'm going to show a few things, um, a different, another dis different aspect of my collect uh, collection, uh, record albums. Um, they mostly are like biographical type things. Um, most of you who collect baseball memorabilia or Red Sox memorabilia have probably seen these. They're not terribly uncommon, but I think they're kind of cool. Um, just another little niche in my collection. Um, and I've got five of them that I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to start off with the first one is, and these are in no particular order. Uh, this is a Carl Yastrzemski uh, full-size record, and I'm not a record collector. Uh, I know it's not a 45. It's either a 33 and a third or a 78. I, I really don't know. Um, this is uh, Kurt Gowdy talking baseball with Carl Yastrzemski. It's about 50 minutes total. Um, this one's in really really top shape, uh, completely sealed, never been opened. Um, has a picture of Carl on the back, or Gowdy on the back. It's kind of a cool item. Um, it seems to be a Kyle Yastrzemski theme with these particular items. Uh, the second one I have is the Yaz 3000 album. Um, I believe this was made after he had got his 3000 hit in 1979. Uh, so it was probably made in either 79 or 80. Um, Never listened to it. This one is opened. I think it was sealed originally, but just the wear of having it, uh, the, the side is opened up on it. Um, again, they're not terribly valuable. I could get one that's sealed, no problem. Eventually, I may try to get a record player and uh, play these just for the fun of it. Uh, my dad actually has a one of the newer style phonographs that you can actually put a... a like a jump drive in and actually record off of the record player. So I may try to do that so I can have them on a, on a media and play them in the background sometime just to listen to them. Uh, so that one's kind of cool. Um, this one, again, a little bit of a Yaz theme. This is The Impossible Dream, the story of the 1967 Red Sox. Um, this is kind of cool. This one is uh, open in great condition, has a team photo on the back. Um, the condition is pretty nice. Um, Again, the record itself, not scratched or anything. 
um, full size album. Love the artwork on it. Just a kind of a cool thing. Um, and then another team that I was a little too young to to know, but uh, tried to do my history lessons on it. The seventy five socks, the Super Sox seventy five. I was a whopping year and a half old when this team went to the World Series in seventy five. Um, this one is completely sealed. I uh, love it. Again, I love the cover on this. I love the artwork. It's it's very 70s. Um, and then on the back, of course, team photo, some of the team executives in the corner, and just a little bit of a bio about what the album is about. It says, all the exciting play-by-play -play action, highlights, and interviews of the Red Sox 1975 championship season, including playoffs and World Series. And it was narrated by uh, Ned Martin, who... We, uh, we watched the Red Sox in the late 70s and early 80s. We all know who Ned Martin is. Um, so that was that one. And this is one that I picked up three or four months ago. It's actually, ironically, and this is kind of funny that I'm reading the back of it for the first time. Um, it's not really about the Red Sox at all. It's just the cover has a picture of a ball player in a Red Sox uniform. And ironically enough, I'm reading the back of it. It's Dave Fingers McKenna. Never had heard of this guy. Saw it online. Saw he was wearing a Red Sox uniform. And thought, oh, that'd be cool to add to my collection. And I'm looking at the back of it. And it has the playlist on the back of it. And on side one, song number four, a song called Chloe, which happens to be my five-year-old's name. So I might have to, uh, this one is actually open. I might have to... Uh, find a record player and play that song just to hear what it says because I think that's really cool. I've never noticed that until right now. That uh, song four, side one, Chloe. Uh, I'll have to show that to my wife. She'll get a kick out of that. Um, so double extra meaning, I guess, for that. So it's kind of cool when you when you see something like that for the first time. So um, the, the only one I can think of uh, as far as a full-size record that I don't have that I'd like to get is the Red Sox organ music. Uh, just kind of music from around the ballpark. I'd love to get that one and get that on some digital media and listen to it because uh, I, I love the sound of the organ at the ballpark. Um, that's, I've seen them. They're on eBay. Um, I, I'm not going to pay the 20 to $25 that people are asking for them. I'm hoping one of these days I'll luck out and find one at a garage sale for $0.25 cents, um, or you know, find one somewhere online or somebody selling it on a marketplace or maybe somebody's got one. It's the organ music. I don't remember the exact title of it, uh, but it's organ music of the Boston Red Sox. So that's And then, of course, uh, a lot of people probably don't realize this. Tony Canigliero, um actually had several... 45s that he issued. I've never seen a full-size album, but he had a lot of individual single albums with covers. Um, I haven't bought any of those yet. I see them all the time, uh, but I had, just haven't brought myself to buy one because they, they're kind of expensive. And, and I really, I definitely want to get them someday, but I really don't uh, feel like I'm going to want to spend that kind of money on it um, unless, you know, it happened to be autographed or something because um, we all know that Tony C autographs are Pretty hard to find, and if you're looking over my left shoulder here, as I point, that lithograph on the wall is actually um, a Tony C lithograph with a index card signed by him. I bought that at the uh, Wilmington show that I was talking about the other night. Uh, about a, I believe that was at last spring's show. Got a really good deal on it. The seller obviously didn't really care. The thing was covered in dust on top of his uh, top of his table, and. Uh, I spotted that and I didn't, I did not hesitate. I had to carry it around with me at the show for a while and people were eyeballing it. And of course, so many people, Oh, that's not real. That's fake. Um, uh, Sunday I may try to get it certified, but it's, it's a very clean autograph on the card and it's, it looks legit to me. And I'm pretty savvy when it comes to Red Sox autographs. I've seen a lot of them and I, um, this, this really nice piece. He had several other pieces of different athletes as well uh, set up the same way. So I had no reason to believe that it was not legitimate. So uh, anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, hopefully some more people are watching my videos. Feel free to subscribe um, and I'll continue to post. I'm, I'm having a good time doing it. It's a lot of fun for me. I love talking baseball. I love talking about my collection. I love talking about the Red Sox. So, uh, you know, shoot me a message. Put a comment down here if you like what you see. If there's anything in particular that you want to see out of my collection, I'm going to try to do different aspects of it from time to time, along with covering mail base. So that's all I got for tonight. Have a good night, everybody.